So back on the uh, on the conspiracy aspect of this, is it any coincidence that this was published just that the outage happens just three days after this was published? Uh, it could be a coincidence. Like I said, I, I am not a fan of conspiracy theories. But what better way to uh, get people to uh, recall just how much, how, how little they can live without Facebook and WhatsApp and Instagram by just having a major outage uh, at a time that you're having this bombshell report appear? Ladies and gentlemen, this is my first video live from Nicaragua, where I will be staying for about a month and a half. And I figured that given that I have a, a much more uh, sunnier tropical background than I do in Mexico City, which is uh, actually does not have the sunniest weather in the world, uh, contrary to what many of you might think. I feel that it is appropriate to make my first video in color because the kind of the dark brooding look that I wanted to give uh, just doesn't really apply here. It's it's just too nice outside. It's 30 degrees. There's palm trees. Um, I'm not sure you can see them from the light. Maybe I'll move the table closer uh, for the next video. But yeah, it's it's just too nice to, to do black and white. Um, so... On that note, uh, what I wanted to discuss today was something that is probably uh, why maybe some of you are more on YouTube today than uh, than normal days, and that's because you don't have Facebook or WhatsApp or Instagram. Uh, as it turns out, Facebook has suffered a massive outage that I think it's unprecedented, at least uh, since I've been using Facebook for over over a decade. And, well, it's really bad. Uh, let's just see how bad that is. So we have this tweet from the New York Times' tech reporter. Was on the phone with someone who works for Facebook who described employees unable to enter buildings this morning to begin to evaluate extent of outage because their badges weren't working to access doors. This is crazy. So this is... You would think that like the uh, the systems that go into keeping Facebook online have nothing to do with the systems that operate the building itself, but clearly there is a bigger issue here. Uh, this one's also pretty apocalyptic. Uh, so someone deleted large sections of the routing. That doesn't mean Facebook is just down from the looks of it. That means Facebook is gone. So I'm not sure just how bad this is. Uh, I'm sure that Facebook has backups for most of its content. Um, I don't know. Once it gets back online, maybe there'll be some some data missing. Uh, who knows? But uh, yeah, this these two these two tweets really give you the scale of, of the problem that they're facing right now. Now, here's where where we'll put our conspiracy theory hats on the tinfoil hats, and, and usually I'm not one for conspiracy theories, but I feel that this time, well, there might just be something plausible about this. And that is because just a couple of days ago, the Facebook files were published in the Wall Street Journal. This was a series of, of, of leaks that were made to the, to the journal, and they covered a lot of very interesting aspects of the company, and basically that they've been uh, they've been lying to people about the the sort of importance that they give to to certain negative issues involving their different brands which you must recall it's not just Facebook it's also WhatsApp it's also Instagram um, I don't know which other ones but at least the problematic ones have been Facebook and Instagram so let's sort of read the uh, the highlights of, of all these I mean this is a really massive series of, of articles. We're not going to go all through them. I'm going to put the link in the description. Um, but let's let's just read some of the, the, the summaries here. So Facebook knows in acute detail that its platforms are riddled with flaws that cause harm, often in ways only the company fully understands. 
And let's see. So one, Facebook says its rules apply to all. Company documents reveal a secret elite that's exempt. Now, I think this is the same thing that goes on in YouTube. And I'm going to, I'm just going to explain first. Zuckerberg has said Facebook allows its users to speak on equal footing with the elites of politics, culture, and journalism, that its standards apply to everyone. In private, the company has built a system that has exempted high-profile users from some or all of its rules. The program, known as CrossCheck or XCheck, was intended as a quality control measure for high-profile accounts. Today, it shields millions of VIPs from the company's normal enforcement. Many abuse the privilege, posting material including harassment and incitement to violence that would typically lead to sanctions. Facebook says criticism of the program is fair, that it was designed for a good purpose, and the company is working to fix it. Yada, yada, yada. I think YouTube, the exact same thing happens with YouTube. I think there is content that a lot of people produce that the algorithm deliberately uh, does not challenge in any way. And, and I say this as someone who has had one of my videos taken down by YouTube because the algorithm thought that it was an anti-vax video when it actually was anti-anti-vax. And yet the people, the, the video that I made a, a debunking of, that video is still there. Uh, if you look at the Jimmy Dore show right now, Jimmy Dore is like full-on anti-vax now. Like full-on, mask off. And yet nothing has been done about him. Uh, Russell Brand has also gone into the anti-vax rabbit hole. You know, they're not open anti-vax. I, I, I've explained the distinction before in other videos of like um, what what one journalist, uh, Owen Higgins, calls soft and hard anti-vax. You know, the hard anti-vax are the ones who are openly against the vaccine. The soft anti-vax, they just, you know, they, they, they're against mandates. They're, you know, just questioning things. They're discussing other alternative treatments. They're saying you know, big pharma's involved. That's the main difference. But there's so many of these accounts that are basically peddling anti-vax crap and they're not being taken down because they generate a lot of ad revenue, I suppose. So, yeah. So I think, like I said, I think this definitely happens on YouTube as well. Facebook knows Instagram is toxic for many teen girls. Company documents show. Uh, for the record, I hate Instagram. I don't have Instagram. I never plan on being on Instagram. Uh, I think it's just such a fucking waste of time. And I think it's just promoting a degree of narcissism uh, and self-absorption that, that is unbelievable. And with that, uh, a lot of clearly obvious mental health issues for the people who are obsessed with being, you know, having the perfect Instagram profile. Uh, researchers inside Instagram have been studying for years how its photo sharing app affects millions of young users. Repeatedly, the company found that Instagram is harmful for a sizable percentage of them, mostly, most notably teenage girls, more so than other social media platforms. In public, Facebook has consistently played down the app's negative effects, including comments to Congress. Um, yeah, whatever. So... In response, Facebook says the negative effects aren't widespread, that the mental health research is valuable, and that some of the harmful aspects aren't easy to address. So they don't care. <laughs> uh, Facebook tried to make its platform a healthier place. It got angrier instead. <laughs> Facebook made a heralded change to its algorithm in 2018 designed to improve its platform and arrest signs of declining user engagement. Uh, so this was done to strengthen bonds between users and improve their well-being by fostering interactions between friends and family. Uh, but apparently it had the opposite effect, made people angrier. Zuckerberg resisted some fixes proposed by a team because they, he worried they would lead people to interact with Facebook less. Uh, that's crazy. I mean, he's just so obsessed with, with like everyone centering their entire life around Facebook. He's, he's fucking, he's like, he's paranoid to some extent. Um, and this is, well, no, actually, I'm not going to say this now. I'm going to say this as a, as a conclusion of this video, because I have some thoughts. Uh, Facebook employees flag drug cartels and human traffickers. The company's response is weak. Well, of course. Scores of Facebook documents reviewed by the Wall Street Journal show employees raising alarms about how platforms are used in developing countries where its user base is huge and expanding. Employees flagged that human traffickers in the Middle East used the site to lure women into abusive employment situations. They warned that armed groups in Ethiopia used their site to incite violence against ethnic minorities. They sent alerts to their bosses about organ selling, pornography, and government action against political dissent. 
They also show the company's response, which in many instances is in inadequate or nothing at all. Yeah. That is so obvious. Um, yeah, how Facebook hobbled Mark Zuckerberg's big to get America vaccinated. Yeah, so basically, uh, he wanted to use it as a platform for uh, for vaccination, and all it did is just sprout like a fuckload of of anti-vax groups. Um, yeah, that is that is true. Uh, Facebook efforts to attract preteens goes beyond Instagram kids. Um, yeah, that's disgusting. Honestly, I I think so many people in my generation uh, have avoided mental health issues just because we weren't on Instagram when we were teens. Um, I can't imagine like the the degree of of uh, you know insecurities uh, that we would all have if we had been on friggin' Instagram. Uh, anyway. Facebook's documents about Instagram and teens published as yes, a committee teens and mental health was promoted by a mid-September article in Wall Street Journal based on internal company documents, details, Facebook internal research on the negative impact of its Instagram app on teen girls and others. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of, oh, and the whistleblower. So this was uh, Francis Hogan, I guess that's pronounced. This is what I find like really odd. Uh, she says she wants to fix the company, not harm it. So she was a, a former Facebook product manager. Who, uh, she said she had grown frustrated by what she saw as a company's lack of openness about its platform's potential for harm and unwillingness to address its flaws. A Facebook spokesman Andy Stone said the company strives to balance free expression with safety. To suggest we encourage bad content and do nothing is just not true. Well, there you go. So... Back on the uh, on the conspiracy aspect of this, is it any coincidence that this was published? Just that the outage happens just three days after this was published. Uh, it could be a coincidence. Like I said, I, I am not a fan of conspiracy theories. But what better way to uh, get people to uh, recall just how much how how little they can live without Facebook and WhatsApp and Instagram by just having a major outage? Uh, at a time that you're having this bombshell report appear. Um, and, and this is what actually I find very suspicious about, uh, about this tweet. So think about this. Like I said, I find it very strange that the same systems that control the, uh, you know, the, the, how the building operates are the same ones that keep Facebook operational. This is incredibly strange. I'm not aware. I mean, certainly any company that I've lived, uh, I've worked in, uh, this has, you know, there's there's some degree of, uh, of independence between these uh, these systems. So, uh, unless of course this was all deliberate, because uh, what better way to prolong an outage by preventing the people who could fix the outage to actually go inside the building and fix it. So that would be very convenient if you want this outage to last for a while. Now, a lot of people, uh, so a lot of people, uh, you know, they're, they're hooked on Facebook, they're hooked on WhatsApp, whatever, for, for whatever reasons, um, you know, but ultimately this is not exactly uh, productive. It, it doesn't serve a productive purpose. That's what I mean. But other apps, like for example, WhatsApp, definitely have a productive use in the sense that a lot of people communicate with each other uh, through WhatsApp. I found it very strange that uh, today, like most of this morning, the, uh, the internet connection here was really bad. And for the past two days that I've been here, it's actually been remarkably, remarkably good and remarkably stable. Um, you know, as good and as fast as, as what I have in, in, what I had in Britain or what I had in Mexico. So Nicaraguan internet is pretty damn good. And today it was just really slow in the morning. And I'm, I'm genuine. This is merely a hypothesis. Uh, could it be that a lot of internal communication uh, within the, uh, the internet provider is done through WhatsApp or things like that? So could this have had an effect? I don't know. Maybe it did. So it could give us, it gives people two reasons to think that they're, that they can't live without these companies. You know, that, that, you know, if you're addicted to, to, uh, checking Facebook out every day, 
uh, or messaging every day through through Facebook or through WhatsApp. Suddenly, you're you're completely you're out of the loop. You're out of the loop with with uh, your friends, family, etc. And well, this makes you somewhat sympathetic. You're going to say, well, you know, Facebook has its problems. It's not perfect, but uh, I can't live without it anymore. We're better off with a imperfect Facebook than without it. And this could be a reason. If you wanted to make it deliberate, this would be the best reason to making a deliberate outage. Uh, again, I'm not, I, I, I'm not going to die on this hill. I would not bet on this theory. I'm just saying, if there was a reason for it, what better reason than now, after these documents have been published? And also, uh, in terms of, I think, I don't know about you people. Uh, I'd like to hear the comments if you have any. Uh, I've just felt, so I, I've generally been, uh, I used to prefer Facebook to Twitter for a long time, for, until quite recently. I would prefer Facebook to Twitter because it was mostly people I knew. I could also get engaged in longer conversations, things like that. I mean, Twitter is really bad for debate. Uh, or having you know serious political discussions, whereas Facebook is kind of you know it's better for it. There's no word limit, uh, so I used to enjoy it more. But over the last year or two, I just felt that activity, and especially this year, I felt that activity has just gone down. Uh, not just my own activity, which in a sense is reflective of other people's activity. That is the point of a social network. But I have felt that in general, you know, people who have not been active, uh, sorry, people who were active are now much less active. Uh, I have numerous friends who have quit Facebook altogether. And maybe they weren't like super huge users, but at least uh, at least they used it every so often. Uh, and now they're gone. Um, I spent like two weeks, uh, uh, like a month or two ago in which I didn't post at all for like two weeks. And a, no one seemed to notice, <laughs> and B, I didn't seem to care either. So I just get the feeling that people are kind of growing out of Facebook. Uh, again, this is my impression based on my circle of friends. It might not be everyone's uh, experience, but, but it definitely is something that I have noted. And it is definitely like my engagement on Facebook, if you measured it by the minute per day, has gone way down over the past year, like way, way down, even considering lockdown uh, and COVID, it's gone way down. And yeah, I'm more active on, on Twitter nowadays. Uh, you know, I spend time doing these videos, but just Facebook just doesn't have that, that charm that it did before. I don't know why. So there was, there was another article on, uh, I, I did not, I did not put the tab up, but I did tweet it. And where is it? This one. Yeah. Facebook is weaker than we knew. And well, this is related to the, uh, to the Wall Street Journal leaks as well. But I like the framing of this. It's, you know, hints at a company whose best days are behind it. And that is kind of what I feel like it. I, I, I just don't think that Facebook is really going to go back to its, to its glory days of, uh, I just think, you know, people move on. People have, uh, find other ways of communicating with each other, find other ways of socializing. You know, it, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like going to a bar. Uh, you, you go to the cool bar for a while, but then that bar just stops being cool for no reason whatsoever. Not necessarily because it's, it's worse. Uh, just people kind of want to change. Will this change be good? I don't know. Uh, if more people are moving, say, to Instagram, I would say that is way worse because Instagram is just terrible. Um, if we're moving to Twitter, are we going to be better people? I also don't think so because Twitter just makes people angry all the time. Uh, you know, Twitter is basically to pick fights with random people all over the world. Uh, I personally enjoy that, but <laughs> not everyone does. So I don't know what the solution is. Uh, I think... Uh, all I'm saying is, I think social media as we know it might have its its days numbered. Uh, what might emerge from it, I don't know. But definitely, I think if 
if one of the tech giants is to fall, and I've always thought this, by the way, if there was one tech giant, if there was the first one to fall, I've always thought that it was going to be Facebook. Because I just don't think that it had anything going for it for the long run uh, compared to all the other ones. So we'll see. Too early to tell. Um, but yeah. In the meantime, enjoy your day without Facebook, uh, without Instagram, without WhatsApp. WhatsApp I actually do have increasingly relied on. So <laughs> I, I, there's a lot of people that I can't communicate with today. But yeah, just we need to we need to move away from from these from these apps from these systems, which uh, I do think at this point in history do more harm than good. So yeah, that's uh, that's also the reason why the, I don't have a progressive TV Facebook page because I really just I can't be bothered. <laughs> Or Instagram. But yeah, on that note, hope you enjoyed this video. Let's see what happens with the leaks. Let's see if anything, anything, any new uh, sinister news comes out of it that suggests that it might have been planned, uh, or maybe it was, you know, the best hacking job ever made. That would be amazing if someone managed to hack Facebook uh, to cause it to go down for a whole day. Amazing. My hat is tipped off to whoever managed that. But yeah. In the meantime, hope you enjoyed this video in color, full Technicolor. And please like, please share. Most importantly, please subscribe. And I will see you next time.